Okay folks, we're going to look at Euler circuits and we're going to break away for the next two videos. We're going to look at Euler circuits and Hamiltonian circuits. I'm doing an additional session on this that enriches what we've got in the book quite extensively. The book is very, it's two, three pages in the book. But these two um, type of circuits are important to understand for graph theory. So let's have a look. What is Euler circuits used for? It's used for urban services, like postal services, service, meet, uh, service meter readings, garbage pickups, checking parking meters, inspecting potholes, delivering post to people. These are all called urban services. And Euler circuits helps us to develop the most efficient way of delivering these services. <coughs> Sorry, if we look at the, the graph that I have here, this is a particular section of a block in a suburb. On either side of this block, we might have a felt there, a felt here, a felt here. Here's a playing, a park where children play. Really doesn't matter. But it, we can turn this into a graph representation where every vertex on our graph represents where two of these roads intersect with one another and where there are edges that are duplicated it means we go to this side of the road and then we walk on the other side of the road so each street intersection is a vertex and each sidewalk that contains meters or post boxes makes up an edge we use curves to emphasize certain aspects of the graph problem. Now, what is an Euler circuit? An Euler circuit is a circuit that covers every edge once and have the start and same ending points. So a circuit that covers each edge once, not more than once, is called an Euler circuit. It starts and it finishes at the same vertex. So the graph is a nice representation of that. We start at this vertex, we move along that edge, one, then two, then we move there, three, four, we go up the street, we come down the other side, we move along that part of the street, we move back on that section and we back at where we started. We've just completed an Euler circuit. Let me just close this thing. Okay. So, this is Leonard Euler, the guy who's responsible for this very exciting mathematics that we're going to look at. We're going to focus on four key areas, Euler circuits, finding Euler circuits. And we're going to go beyond Euler circuits, where we don't have Euler circuits, and we need to Eulerize graphs. And then we're going to look at urban graph traversal problems. Those are known as the Chinese postman problem. Okay, we'll get to that towards the end of the video. So let's have a look. To find an Euler circuit, we ask ourselves two questions. Is there a way to tell by calculation or logic reasoning, not by trial and error, if a graph will have an Euler circuit, number one? Number two, is there a method other than trial and error for finding such an Euler circuit where one exists and to find it quite quickly? So number one, is there an Euler circuit? And number two, how do I find it? Well, in 1753, Leonard Euler asked the same question and investigated these questions by using the concept of valence and connectedness. The valence up to this point we've used as a degree of a vertex. It's another word for that is valence. And connectedness tells us if a graph is indeed all the vertices on that graph is indeed connected, then it's a connected graph. Okay, so the valence of a vertex is the number of edges that are incidents or that meet at that particular vertex. And connectedness means that every vertex that is on the graph is connected to another vertex by an edge. Now let's look at this graph. Is this graph um, connected? Well, the answer is no. If we look at vertex C up here, we have a problem. Vertex C is not connected to the rest of the graph. Okay, so vertex C has a valence of naught because there's no edges going into vertex C or leaving it. 
At vertex B, the valence of that vertex is 2. At vertex A, the valence is 3. There's three edges leaving or entering the vertex, and the same happens at vertex D. Okay, so here we have the same situation. The graph is connected, and every single vertex has a, is, is connected by an edge. Hence, there was an Euler circuit in that graph. So when will a graph possess an Euler circuit? Let's formalize this. We do so by looking at the Euler circuit theorem. If G is a connected graph, so there's condition number one, it's connected, and has valences that are even, there's con uh, condition number two, then G has an Euler circuit. So there's two conditions. It has to be even valenced as well as have uh, be connected. Now, if we look at that previous graph quickly, there's an even valence. There's four even valence. There's two even valence. Two there, valence even. Four and two again. So, <clears throat> sorry, for that graph, we definitely have an even valence. So it is quick to check, oh, sorry, and the converse is also true. If the graph is Eulerian, then it means that every valence is even and the graph is indeed connected. Okay, so it is quick to check whether the graph is connected and even valent, and then to deduce that there is indeed an Euler circuit. Now let's look at this graph. We're going to try and redraw this graph without lifting our pen or without deadheading. Now, what is deadheading? Deadheading is if you make a journey without a load. Some of us that come from Gauteng and drive down to Durban see often sadly see the trucks from Zimbabwe with, and driving in convoy from Zim right down to Durban where they are to collect their loads and drive back to Zim. That is deadheading. They drive empty when they drive down to Durban, collect their load and drive back to Zimbabwe. Another incidence of deadheading is if a plane flies down to Cape Town, the plane is full and then flies up to Joburg empty and then just collect passengers in Joburg and fly them back to Cape Town. That's deadheading. Okay, and aeroplanes that we know don't do that. So let's have a look. Let's ask ourselves the two questions. Is this graph connected? Yes, it is. Let's see why. Every vertex is indeed connected to an adjacent vertex by an edge. Does it possess an Euler circuit? Now remember, we've established connectiveness. So we've established the first condition. Now we need to look at the valence of each vertex. Those two are even. <coughs> the other four vertices each have a valence of four, and therefore all the vertices are even valence. So yes, it does possess an Eulerian circuit, okay, because it's connected and the valence is even. Now let's try and find that circuit. If we start at the vertex over here and we move away from it to the other vertex with valence 2. Then we move down that edge, we move across to the middle vertex and past that we move to the vertex in the bottom left. Then we move to the vertex adjacent to it. We move to the vertex at the top. We move across. Now remember, at the end of this journey, we must end at this vertex, then it's a circuit. So we move diagonally across down to the bottom vertex, move to the vertex of valence two, move to four, and what have we here? We are back at the starting vertex. So our Eulerian circuit is indeed there. Okay, so I want you to pause the video at this stage and to see can you find an Eulerian circuit on this graph. So pause it now and then come back. Okay, let's have a look. Is it a connected graph? Definitely, all the vertices are connected by an edge. Does it possess an Eulerian circuit? Let's have a look. There's a valence of 2, a valence of 4, 4, and 4, and oopsie, there's two odd valenced nodes at the bottom. They have an odd degree of 3. 
So this graph does not possess an Eulerian circuit because it's not even valent. We'll talk about that later on when we look at beyond the Euler graphs. Okay, so again, pause the video at this stage. There where the blue arrow is, I want you to start the process and try and find an Eulerian circuit in this graph. So pause now and see if you can do that. Okay, let's see if it has an Eulerian circuit. Well, there's what, two, four, six vertices with even valent two, and there's four with even valent of four. So definitely it possesses an Eulerian circuit. It's connected and even valenced. We start and we go left. We go up. Now you'll notice that I'm using arrows here on my graphs. That is just to show you in which direction we will be moving. We move across, I move up. I didn't have to move up, I could have moved horizontally onto the next one. This is just one Eulerian circuit that we could find. Then we move back down, I move back to that vertex, I move down to the starting vertex and from there I go right. I then go up to that vertex, go left, go down, go right go to the bottom and then go back to the vertex that I started with. So that is just one of the Eulerian circuits that one can find in this graph. Here's another one. In this one, we started at the initial vertex. <coughs> I beg your pardon. Then we went up to two. We went across to that vertex down there, came across, went up down, back, across, up, there, 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 and back to the starting vertex. Now I'm sure you can find more than two Eulerian circuits in this graph. Okay, so see if you can find a few more. Now this one, we find Eulerian circuits for the following graphs if they exist. Now let's just have a look. Is this even balanced? If we look at every vertex, we see that every single vertex is even valenced. Okay, so at this stage, I want you to pause and to see, can you find an Eulerian circuit on this graph? Pause it now. Okay, let's see if you were indeed correct. It's even valent and connected, so it does have an Eulerian circuit. There's one version <coughs> of the Eulerian circuit. Starting up here at one, we move down, we go two, we go three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, down, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26. I'm back where I started. Okay, now that is if we start at this vertex. You can start at any other vertex if you want to and find more Eulerian circuits. Now, some of you might have found that you ran into a problem here. And the problem is if I came down at 3 and I go to 4. Now, notice I went 3, 4, and then that would have been 5. I haven't covered this area yet. I come down for six and oopsie, I'm in trouble. I have to repeat this side. Okay, I have to repeat that so I would have deadheaded again at this bottom part here if I wanted to go across. So be careful of crossings like this so that you don't lock yourself out of visiting those last two vertices. Very important to take a note of that and to bear that in mind when you traverse the graph in search of an Eulerian circuit. Okay, let at this point there's another graph for you. I want you to find the Euler circuits for this graph if they exist. Now remember, you're going to start off by checking is it even valenced or first if it's connected. It's no use checking the valence of the, the vertices or the degree of the vertices if it's a not a connected graph. Is it connected? Is it even valenced? Pause the video now and come back after you've completed the work. 
Okay, let's have a look. Definitely connected. Definitely even valent. If you look at each of the vertices, they have an even valent. Okay, so if we start at vertex A, I'm just going to do one of them for you. If we start at A, then we can go down to B, go down to E, go up to C, down to M, then to L, then to H, to J, to K, to F, to E, from E to D, D to H, and then H to what looks like I, I to E. So, so far, I've got three edges to still cover E to H, H to G, and then back to A. So, that's just one example of an Eulerian circuit. You could have started anywhere on this graph and draw from there to make sure that you cover every edge once. So, yes, you can see it's not difficult, folks. It's actually easy once you know whether the Euler circuit exists or not. Okay, so let's see what do we do if the graph doesn't have an Euler circuit. So for a graph to have the Euler circuit, it must be even, valent, and connected. Look at it the other way, connected, even, valent first. Okay, so this is called the Chinese Postman problem in general, the Euler, uh, Euler circuits. It's not one problem. It's a class of problems that have the same underlying structure. So let's see. On the left, you have the real life problem. The postman starting from his post office. We must walk each street and return to his post office in the least possible distance. That real life problem is then changed into a network problem. And we solve it using the network. Okay, so looking at a three-block neighborhood, let's have a look. There's the neighborhood. Now I'm going to ask you again to pause the video at this side, at this point, and then try to draw a network from that represents those three blocks in a neighborhood. Pause it now and then come back. Okay, let's see what you did. If you draw the network that represented this graph, it would look like that. Well, I hope you've got it. Let's see why. At each intersection of the roads, now there's a road at the top, so these are all roads. There's a road here and a road here, but we have to look deeper because this is going to be a person that traverses and delivers post, the Chinese postman. Okay, so here he only has to walk up once because there's only houses on the one side. The same there, 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 and there. The only problem is in this street, BF. He's got to walk down this side and then back up that side. So this idea here is represented by a sort of a loop that looks like this. This represents walking down the one side, that walking up the other side. Now let's just see, does it have an Eulerian circuit? Well, if we look at this, that's even valent, even valent, even, 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 and there's two odd valent vertices, C and G, in our problem. That's going to become very important now. Does this have an Euler circuit? Well, if I look at it, it doesn't. C and D is a problem. So I have to add an edge. Now you'll notice that this edge is added in another color. Okay, I've got to traverse that twice in order to complete an Euler circuit. Now, okay, at this point, pause the video and see if you can find the Euler circuit. Then we'll continue. Okay, let's have a look. There's the idea of an Euler circuit. So if we start at A, we move from A to, to B to C to D, from D to H, H to G, G to C, then we come down that C to G again. So that's where we do the double. Then we go to F, we go up to B, down to C, back to E, and then back to the post office, which at this point is at A. Now this is the new edge that we draw, okay? And this is the one edge that we're gonna 
reuse in our graph. Okay, so that has a specific name. That is called Eulerizing the graph. What do we do? We add edges that duplicate existing edges to a connected graph to make all the valences even. And if we do that, we have just Eulerized our graph. Okay, so let's have a look. What do we do? Take the given graph and add the edges by duplicating existing edges until you arrive at a graph that is connected and even valent. Note that after a graph is Eulerized, the new graph will possess an Euler circuit. Okay, find the Euler circuit on the Eulerized graph. And then they do something they call squeezing. Squeeze this Euler circuit from the Eulerized graph onto the original graph. So from the network back onto the real life problem by reusing an edge of the original graph each time the circuit on the Eulerized graph uses an added edge. Okay, suppose now we want to Eulerize that graph. That graph has four vertices of which two of them are even and two of them B and C are odd valent. They both have a degree of three. So when we Eulerize the graph, we first locate those vertices that have odd valence. Okay, so that is vertex B and vertex C. Okay, so what do we do now? Well, we connect an edge that makes them even valent. Now in this particular one we've inserted the blue edge. We've gone from B which was odd, made it even. We went to an even valent vertex which was even and with this edge added was odd. So we had to make it even by drawing another edge from there to the odd valence vertex C. Now there are there is one vertex with valence 2 and 1, 2, 3 of the vertices with valence 4. Okay, so after we Eulerized, each of the vertices was even valenced. Okay, so if I start at A, I go down, go back, go to 3, go to 4, go to 5, go to 6, back to 7, I have a circuit. Or I could have gone 1, 2, 3, 4, four, five, six, seven. Okay, that is just indicating the different arrows that I have used. So joining the edges A and C are squeezed together to make up an Eulerized curve. Okay, so let's have a look. Note, notice that each reuse of an edge corresponds to an added edge. Sorry. So there's an added edge, there's an added edge. So twice we reused those two edges. Okay, so now we can ask the question, how do we Eulerize a graph that is odd valenced and more than one edge apart? The odd valenced vertices are more than one edge apart. Previously they were adjacent. Oh yeah, B and C, they were opposite each other in that case. Okay, so how do we Eulerize an odd valent vertices that are more than one edge apart? Well, let's have a look. There's a situation where we have a graph where there's two vertices with odd valence. Okay, X and Y are those vertices, X and Y. Now the question is, how do I Eulerize the graph? So in other words, how do I add edges to this graph so that the odd valences become valent vertices become even valent vertices. Well, one thing I can't do is I cannot just draw a new edge, x, y, this blue edge. There was no path between x and y. I cannot just insert a path. I must use the existing graph and I must deadhead on some of these sides to get from X to Y. Now let's have a look. So that is key. Please make a huge note of that. If you Eulerize, you cannot create new paths. You duplicate paths. Okay, so that is completely out. So let's go back to the graph. Well, I can start by connecting X to the adjacent vertex. That will make X even valent, and the vertex that was even is now odd valent. 
Okay, so I can now either go down across there, there to get to Y, there, 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 or I can just continue on this journey. Now I'm looking for the shortest path. So I'm going to take that vertex, which is E odd valent now, with a valence of 5, turn it into a valence of 6 by duplicating this path. Now this vertex was even valent, it's now odd. But no problem, I continue to Y, this then becomes even, and then my vertex Y is indeed even. Okay, so I'm looking to Eulerize this graph. I'm looking at adding the least amount of edges to the graph to get from one vertex that's odd valent to another vertex at odd valent, and those vertices are definitely not um, adjacent to one another. They are separated by a few other vertices. Okay, so the structure of the graph focuses on repeating edges. We cannot get away with fewer than three repeats. We could have had more, but it makes sense to have as little deadheading as possible. So the minimum amount we could do to make X and Y even valent is add three edges. Now I want you to look at this graph that we've already covered, and I want you to pause the video and create an edge, the minimum number of edges that will Eulerize that graph. Pause now and let's get back to it and see if your intuition was correct. Okay, let's have a look. Previously we went from B to A and then from A to C. Okay, so we want an optimal Eulerization. Optimum is usually a maximum or a minimum. In our case, we're talking about the minimum number of edges that we want to add to this graph. Okay, so that would have been to add B, C. And then you can easily then find a circuit. Okay, so pause again and see if you can find the circuit. Okay, let's see if your circuit then made sense. There we go. The only edge that is reused is the edge BC. So we start at A, we go down to C, we go across BC, then we can't go back to A because then we have to reuse edge AC. So we've gone there, we've gone here, we go back to C. Then we go down to D, up to B, and back to our vertex where we started, hence completing an Eulerian circuit on this graph. So let's talk about an optimal Eulerization, a systematic procedure for finding the best Eulerization that exists. But the process is complicated when we want to optimize. Okay, so there is an especially easy technique for Eulerizing. The special category of networks that we often find in our neighborhoods. It's not as easy always to Eulerize as what the graphs are that we are using. Now the three graphs that we're going to look at are all called rectangular networks. This is how suburbs are designed. They are made up of little squares or rectangles compacted in one big area that you live in and then we have a rectangular array. So if a street network is composed of a series of rectangular blocks from a large rectangle, a certain number of blocks high and a certain number of blocks wide, the network is called rectangular. There's examples of three of such networks that we have in um, neighborhoods. Okay, so if we look carefully at them, we can see that in the first network is a square network. There's an even number of houses there and an even here. There's odd valence there, odd valence, odd, 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 odd. All the other valence, valent uh, or vertices are even valent. The same here. Those that meet at the edges odd, 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 except for the extreme points in each edge. They are even valence with two. Now the same here, you'll see there's four and three, 
and here we have 4 and 4 again. Now if you understand these three cases, okay, you will understand what, how we Eulerize a network graph like this. They mainly break up into cases like this. So there appear to be three different patterns depending upon whether the rectangular height and width in the original uh, graph are odd or even numbers. So we call the process we're going to use edge call, edge walking. Sorry, walk around the outer boundary of the large rectangle in some direction. Let's say we're all going to start at vertex A and we're going to walk clockwise. Okay, so let's look at start at the vertex, upper left corner, and then add edges using the following rules. If you start walking and you arrive at an odd valent vertex, which in this case will be this one, link it to the next vertex and then with an added edge. The next vertex now either becomes even or odd. Now if I had this vertex here as my first odd one, then I would have linked it to an even vertex that became odd. Here I have an odd with an odd which will make an even. We'll look at the details now. The next vertex now, as we said, becomes even or odd. If it became even, skip the next vertex and continue walking around until you find the next odd ver valanced one and you connect it with the adjacent vertex. You repeat this process until you have an even valent graph. Okay, let's see how we do edge walking on this square array of three by three. Okay, we start at the corner, say the upper left, and we start walking. Well, A is even valent. Okay, we started there. The first, when arriving at an odd valent vertex, link it to the next vertex. So we've arrived at an odd valent vertex. We have to link it to the next one. Okay, now what happened to that next vertex? The next one happened to be odd and is also now even. Okay, so we walk on, we get to B, B is even valent. Okay, so we're walking. We get to the next odd valent one, which is just below B, we connect it with a vertex adjacent to it. And that vertex happened to be odd valent. Okay, so connecting it with the adjacent vertex made that vertex even. We walk past D because D is even. We get to the first vertex that's odd, we connect it to the adjacent one, which was odd, is now even we walk through C we get to that vertex and we connect it to the vertex right next to it so now we have we did edge walking on this rectangular network folks important rectangular network we did the edge walking we created even valent vertices by repeating some of the sides now let's see what you do with these two graphs that are on the screen. Pause, pause now, do some edge walking and let's see if you can turn this into an even valent graph. Pause now. Okay, let's see what you did. You started at A. The first vertex that was odd was that one. You the next one after it was also odd, so you connected it. Now they're both even. You walk to the next vertex that's odd, which is the one next to B. B, however, is even valent, but you have no option but to connect it to the adjacent vertex, which makes B odd. But B to the next vertex, which is odd, makes B even and the adjacent vertex even. Okay, we walk on. The next odd valent one is there. D is the one it connects with, which now turns D into odd valent, which connects to the next vertex, which is odd, becomes even. Okay, we walk on. There's an odd. The next one is odd. We connect them with the side. We walk with repeating that side. We walk past C. The next odd is over there, and the one adjacent to it is odd. So we connect those, we reuse that edge. So we've Eulerized that graph and every vertex is de definitely even valent. Okay, let's look at the next one. 
Starting at A, the first one that's odd is that one. The one next to it is odd. We connect. We move on. That one is odd. We need to connect it with B, which is even now odd. So that connects to the next and creates three um, even valent vertices. The next one that is odd is over there. The adjacent is also odd. So if we connect them, we've made it even valent. We walk past D to the next vertex, which is odd. The one adjacent to it is odd. We connect. The next vertex is odd, connect to C, make C odd, which connects to the adjacent, make it even. We walk on. That one is the first odd one, the next one is next to it. We connect them and we have changed that graph, which was not all even valent vertices, into an even valent vertices graph. Okay, so a graph that possesses an Euler circuit. Now folks, if a street work, a street network is not rectangular, the Eulerization process is started by locating all the vertices with odd valence and then pairing these vertices with one another and finding the length of the shortest path between each pair. So we now are going to look at weighted graphs, graphs where each edge represents maybe if it's a road, the amount of costs to make that road. If it's time, the amount of time it's going to take to walk along that road. Each road will have a weight. Okay, so we look at the shortest path because each degree on the connected paths will be duplicated. Each edge, rather, will be duplicated. The idea is to choose the pairings cleverly so that the sum of the lengths of those paths is the smallest it can be. Now that sum of the lengths is what we're going to call the weight of our graph. Okay, so there is a simple observation that often saves a lot of work. You count the number of odd valent vertices in a graph, this number must always be an even number. So you can't have three odd valent vertices, you must have four or six or eight or two. Okay, so let's have a look. When we duplicate an existing edge, we can never change more than two odd valent vertices to even valent vertices. So what they're saying by that is, we saw that with the edge walking, two adjacent vertices, if they're odd, we can change them. Then we walk on until we get another odd, then we change that pair. So you change them in pairs at the time. Thus, in the best Eulerization of a graph, the number of edges that must be duplicated is at least the number of odd valenced vertices divided by two. So if there's six odd valenced vertices, then you're going to reuse three edges. But you want to do a clever, a good Eulerization here. You want it with minimum weight. Okay, so if we look at this particular graph to start off with, Find the best Eulerization for the graph. In other words, the number of edges that must be duplicated, at least the, the number of odd valent vertices divided by two. Okay, so that's so find the number of pairings that you can do that will Eulerize this graph. You can see if we look at each of these graphs, there are three odd valent vertices. Okay. So remember, you can't draw a path between X and W or directly between W and Y because no such a path existed. You must reuse paths. Okay, so pause the video at this stage and on both of those graphs, try and find um, an Eulerization of the graph that uses the minimum number of edges. Note that this is not a weighted graph. Okay, but there's a certain number of edges from X to W, you want to use the minimum number of edges. Pause now, Eulerize the graph in two different ways and then we'll look at it. Okay, let's see what you did. From X to the first vertex, we could have done that. That changes that vertex into odd valent vertex, which we want to be even. Okay, so we go to the next vertex, which was even, is now odd. Okay, because it's odd and W is odd, it makes sense to join those two. 
So there we have three even valent vertices. Okay, using reusing three edges. We start at y, we go to the adjacent, which was even, it's now odd. We go to the adjacent, which was even, it's now odd. Then we go to the adjacent, there, which is now, which was even, sorry, is now odd. And then we join it with the last odd vertex at z. So we have reused a total of seven edges. Let's see if we could have done this differently. We could have started at x, which would make that odd go up, which makes that odd, and adding that edge makes it even. So it looks like the shortest path between x, w is 3. We start at y, we go left. That makes that vertex odd, it was even. So we go to the adjacent down, which was even, it's now odd. Down one more, was even, it's now odd. Then move one to the right, so both of them are even. That's then an even valent vertex graph. All the vertices are even valent. We have Eulerized the graph using the minimum number of pathways to do just that. Remember, you would be tempted to, to join Y with the vertex underneath it, but there is no pathway there, so you're not allowed to. Okay. So we're going to look at urban traversal problems. And some of the streets that we find in cities are one-way streets. Okay, so we need to put arrows on the corresponding edges of the graph, resulting in a directed graph. A directed graph is a graph where you can only move in that particular direction. The short name for it is called a digraph. Okay, so here we have a block in the middle. There's a one way coming down uh, from north to south. Then there is um, a one way going back from south to north. And then the dual lanes that move across that are also one ways. Okay, so the circuits we seek will have to obey those arrows. In the case of salt spreaders and snow plows, which you found mostly in America, each lane of the street needs to be modeled as a direct edge. So that is what the graph would look like. Now notice here, those two are congruent. Where the intersections are, we have vertices, and the number of lanes is represented by a path on the graph. So note that the arrows on the map of the digraph are not in color, because these arrows denote restrictions in traversal possibilities not parts of the circuit. Okay, so let's have a look. There's a real life problem again, the postman, and there's a network problem that we need to form from the real life problem. So we want to do a route inspection or a Chinese postman problem. Let's see. The aim is to traverse every edge in the graph or the network and return to the starting vertex or node in the least possible weight. Or distance depending on what the weight of the graph represents. So an odd vertex must be made even. That is for non-Eulerian and semi-Eulerian graphs must be changed into Eulerian graphs. Okay, so let's see how we do that. Step one is we add up the weight of the arcs and state the total weight of the network. Okay, after that, we write down the orders of each node identifying the nodes, the odd nodes. Okay, that would be your orders would be your, your, your degree of your vertex. Pair up each node that is odd, create a path between them, making the path as small as possible. In other words, a minimum weight path. Pair up all the odd nodes so that the sum of the weights of the paths is minimized. Okay, then duplicate the paths identified in step 4 in the original network. The weight of the network is now the weight of all the arcs in step 1. And the weight of the additional arcs comes in at step from step 4. Identify a path through the Eulerian graph. Now let's see. There is a graph. This graph has weights. 
That weight can mean anything, folks. It could mean the distance between two cities. It could mean those are different shops in, let's say, pick and pay. And that's the kilo kilometers between each shop that the delivery truck will have to travel to deliver goods. It could be the time it takes to get from A to G. It could be the cost of building that road from A to G. It represents something of relevance. Okay, it doesn't have to represent a specific thing. I want you to pause the graph, but look at this now. We want to create an Eulerian circuit here. There are four graphs. So, sorry, we're going to look at that just now. There are four vertices that are odd, G, B, C, and H. Now, I want you to Eulerize the graph using a minimum weight. So, pause at this point and then we'll continue after you've done that. Okay, let's see. Let's answer the questions. What is the weight of the graph? Well, the weight of the graph is adding all the edges together. It gives you 440. How many vertices are odd valent? There are four. B, C, F, and G. Is the graph Eulerian? area? No, not all the vertices are even valent. Okay, so choose the shortest paths. That was the instruction. To Eulerize this graph and then complete the circuit. Okay, so here, those four are the vertices that we want, um, that has odd valent, that are odd valent, then we want to um, add edges so that they can become even valent, okay? So you'd have to choose the minimum one. So 35 and 28 is minimum. The other two edges would have been to join G and F, that's 40. To join B and C, that's 38. Okay, so if this was 31 and this was 28, we would have said something about these two over here. But then we couldn't have chosen this one because it would have already created an even valent. Yes, we will go for the very next one, which would have been 35. Okay, at this point, we add those two edges. So now again, you're gonna, come, you're gonna pause the video and you're gonna run an Eulerian circuit that starts at vertex A and ends at vertex I. So pause now and quickly do a circuit. Okay, let's see. One circuit that could have been is A, B, G, F, C, D, E, F, C, B, G, A. Okay, you might have found another one. <clears throat> if you went from A to B, or A to G first, you would have gone in reverse. So you would go A, G, B, C, F, E, D, C, F, G, B, A, for instance. Okay, so you either go this direction or you went the other direction. But that will make up the circuit that you followed in this particular diagram, repeating the two edges with minimum weight. Okay, there's another graph. Pause the video, Eulerize the graph by choosing the minimum weight edges. First choose the minimum weight edges and then we'll come back to see if your choice was good enough and then we're going to pause again and then you're going to create the circuit. So pause now, do the weight, the, 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 the Eulerizing of the graph. Okay, let's see how you chose. What is the weight of the graph? First of all, well, we add all of it, it's 44. How many valences are odd valent? Well, there's four. There's A, B, C, and D. Is the graph Eulerian? No, because it's odd valent. Now we want to choose the shortest path to Eulerize the graph, and then we'll complete the circuit. And that was your instruction. So the shortest two sides so far is two and three. And then you'll see follow on, following on to that is four and five. Okay, but choosing two and three was clever because you get from D, E, and C by traversing a, way, a, a length of five. That length is six. So you have to repeat this one and that one, so you will have added 10. Here, if you repeated that edge, you would have added 12. But look at this now. If you chose four and five, repeating, <coughs> sorry, four and five will add 18 to the weight of the graph. Whereas if you chose AB and you repeat that edge, that 
would have added 16. So your Eulerization chooses those sides as the sides that are duplicated. Okay, pause the video quickly and do a circuit and then we'll check. Okay, the circuit should be A, B, E, D, C, B, A, E, C, E, D, A. Starts and ends at A. Remember, we're starting at A. You could have gone A to B, A to E, or A to D. If you started A to B, that is where you're going to run. If you started A to D, you run this in reverse. If you went A to E, then you would start here, A to E to C to E to D to A. Okay, and then continue B, E, D, C and then end at A. But in all of these, you're going to see later on, your edges form sort of transformations of that Euler circuit. But in any case, if you traversed each one once, you add the total weight, it must be the minimum weight possible by traversing those sides twice. Now, very interesting here. Look at this. If your number of odd nodes are two, the number of ways of pairing is just one. The minimum number of ways. If it was four, the minimum number of ways was three, which we saw in the previous example. But look at how it grows here. If you have six odd nodes, there's 15 ways to pair them. If you have eight odd nodes, there's 105. 10, 945, and goes up here, it goes up to 14. If there's 14 odd nodes, there's 135,000 ways to pair them. It really grows exponentially, depending on the number of odd nodes that you have in a graph. Okay, here's another problem for you. Find the shortest route starting and finishing at A, which includes every edge in the graph. Now you will notice that in the left graph everything is odd valence, so you need to pick very cleverly and very carefully. Choose, make your choices very wisely. On the right hand side your four outside vertices are odd, so choose wisely how you're going to Eulerize that graph. Pause at this stage and then Eulerize the graph and find the circuit. Okay, then we'll and, and the weight of your circuit and then unpause and see if you were correct. Okay, let's have a look. There's your result. The two edges in this one that you were going to repeat would be every single one of these vertices have to be made even. So it makes sense to choose CB because if you traverse that edge twice you add 4 to the weight of the graph. Okay, You cannot now go and choose 7 because you've already made vertex C even valent. So you need to focus on those two which will mean you need to choose 15, the edge that has the highest weight in the graph and repeat that edge. Could we have done it differently? Well let's see. That adds 17 times 2, which is 34. If we chose 7 and 11, that's 18. Double it up, it's 30. What? 18 times 2 is 36. 34 is still the better option. If we chose this and that one, we would have doubled up 38. Again, okay, so the, the best choice would have been to have those two Eulerized by adding or repeating those two edges, which gives you a total length of your path 81, and there's your circuit. For this here, we're just going to double up. This is so easy. We double up 1 because we add 2. We double up 6 because that adds um, a CB because that adds 6. So in total, we will add 14 to the graph if we reuse these edges. Okay, so the other two are too big. They're 20 and they're 14. It doesn't make sense. So your weight of your minimum weight graph here is 85 and that is the circuit 
that you follow in that graph. Okay, let's look at an algorithm that helps us find an Eulerian circuit. This algorithm is Floyd's algorithm. You start at any vertex if finding an Euler circuit. So you start at a vertex, any vertex. If finding an Euler path, start at one of the vertices that have an odd degree, if the graph has odd valenced vertices. So you either find a circuit or a path. Choose an edge that meets up, um, meets at the current vertex to delete. So Flory's algorithm, instead of coloring the sides, they delete the side to show it's already been used. Deleting an edge must not disconnect the graph. So do not choose a bridge. Remember a bridge is a line that connects two graphs. That's called a bridge. If you remove that, the graph is disconnected. And for an Euler circuit to be part of this graph, the graph must be connected. Okay, so add an edge to the circuit. Add that edge to your circuit that you're writing down. Continue until the circuit is complete. So let's start with this one. We're going to use Floyd's algorithm, and we're going to start at vertex A. The first side we're going to decide to remove. Let's say we choose A B. So we delete it. Okay. That's now part of our circuit. Then the next we can go BE, we can go BC, or we can go BE, the other, the, the loopy BE. So BE has two edges running from it and to it. Okay, so we can either go BC or BE. We choose to go BE. Now be careful, because if you now go from E to A, E to A is in a way a bridge now. Then you disconnect those two graphs. So you cannot go back to this side. You have to go left. Now you can either go back to B and follow this road or go this way and come down. Let's continue. We choose to go to DE. We delete it. It's part of our circuit. So, so far our circuit is A, B, E, D, and then we delete DC. So C becomes part of our circuit. From C we go back to B and then back to E. So we've covered the left part completely. We haven't disconnected the graph. So now we can only go to A. From A we can go to G or F, so we can really choose any one. From G we go back to F, and from F we go back to A. Okay, so we have used Floyd's algorithm here to create an Euler path, a, a Euler circuit from this graph. Okay, so there's our circuit. Our circuit is A, B, E, D, C, B, E, A, G, F, A. So remember, what does Floyd do? It starts at any vertex, and it starts deleting edges, edges um, following on from vertex to vertex until it has created a circuit. The big no-no is do not delete a bridge. Okay, there's one over here. If we look at the vertices here, they all are even valent, so it does have an Eulerian circuit. Okay, so I want you to start at any of the vertices and then write down an Euler circuit. Pause the video now. Using Floyd's algorithm, remember you delete an edge. So I suggest you draw this, this in pencil so that you can delete the edges. Pause now and then we'll talk about it afterwards. Okay, let's see what you did. I started with the edge BC, so I deleted BC. Then I went to AB. Okay, from AB I went to AD, deleted it. Then I could have gone to E or to C from D, or to F. Okay, I chose to go to F, just to be funny. So I deleted F, then I can only go back to C. From C I can go either to E or to D, but remember I started at C. Okay, so I go away from C, delete CE, then ED, then DC, and I have formed my Eulerian circuit, C, B, A, D, F, C, E, D. Okay, folks, you could have gone another way. You could have gone in reverse, C, D, E, C, F, D, A, B, C. Okay, folks, I hope that that made sense to you. That's everything you need to know about Euler circuits, Euler graphs, Eulerizing a graph, 
everything to do with an Euler circuit or an Euler path. One algorithm we used here was Floyd's algorithm. It's quite an easy algorithm. It just works. Instead of coloring the edges, it just deletes the edge. Okay, remember to like the video and to join my channel as a subscriber.